and Jehovah God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And Jehovah God planted a garden eastward, in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Genesis chapter 2 verses 7 and 8. The Bible tells us the Garden of Eden was the intended habitat for man. Because of the original sin of Adam and Eve, they were cast out. This story is known throughout the world, but the story as told in Genesis chapter 6 is only known by a few. Now they have to survive in a hostile environment. Little did they know, how hostile it would become. The reign of the Nephilim started around the time of the patriarch Jared, the sixth generation from Adam. The very angels entrusted to help man, now conspired against him. The angel Satan, was always incensed and jealous of Adam, and refused to pay him homage. Now a group of conspiring angels mated with earthly women, and these women bore the Nephilim. God's creation became an abomination. As we have already heard, these giants were bloodthirsty and made themselves to be gods. The Book of Giants, written by Enoch, reveals part of this story and elaborates on the exploits of the giants, especially the two children of Shemihaza, Oya and Hea. Since no complete manuscript exists of giants, its exact contents and order remain a matter of guesswork. Most of the content of the present fragments concerns the giants' ominous dreams and Enoch's efforts to interpret them and to intercede with God on the giants' behalf. The Book of Giants, like the Book of Enoch, tells us how the Nephilim manipulated the genetics of animals and man, creating all sorts of monsters. The Greekness of the Minotaur and Centaur take on a new and more realistic perspective. There are scholars who now believe the dinosaurs are the result of this genetic manipulation. I believe it to be the best explanation of all the theories I have considered. There are many aspects of the dinosaurs that just do not fit in the scheme of this world. We now have an overall picture of the time period. Created man and all the living creatures were now subjected to the will of the giants, the dinosaurs and all kinds of monstrous hybrids. There is new existing evidence which indicates man was indeed walking with dinosaurs. This entire century we've been told the dinosaurs existed millions of years ago and became extinct before the arrival of man. I find these theories which are based on Darwin's theory of evolution, absurd and shameful. Scientists and educators have gone to great lengths to keep out the creation story from schools throughout the United States. You have to ask yourself, why? There is corruption in this agenda, and in their selected scientific methods. Scientists will tell you if evidence is contaminated and carbon dating will be wildly inaccurate. If you accept the flood theory, then everything was underwater for a year, there is no doubt the evidence before the flood is contaminated. Listen to the opinions of these scientists. My reaction was one of shock. I had heard of human footprints being found in this locale, uh, on the Paluxy near Glen Rose, Texas, but I was rather skeptical. And uh, here, after removing actual rock layers, the team and I excavated a series of dinosaur footprints. And 18 and one half inches from one of those dinosaur footprints, we excavated a 16 inch human footprint. We excavated 12 footprints in a series. And when you find a trail with left, right, left, right pace and stride, the right distance apart, then you have to interpret this as belonging to uh, humankind. Well, we found trails leading under limestone ledges and actually removed the limestone ledges one slab of rock at a time. And we found that both the dinosaur footprints and the trail of human footprints continued under the rock ledges. This evidence is real. I first saw the Burdick print on my initial visit to Glen Rose in 1984. My impression at that time was that it was too perfect. But it's clearly a human footprint demonstrating the heel section, the arch, the base of the metatarsals, the first or great toe, second, third, fourth, and fifth toe. 
After our examination of this print, we find that it definitely is in the Cretaceous uh, limestone, in the same formation with the dinosaur footprints. Here we're looking at a cross section, and we can see very obvious following contours under the great toe, and actually structures under each one. Where we see the calcite inclusion, the force was concentrated and produced these load-bearing structures, which are exactly what geologists look for. We have eliminated uh, the idea that it's carved. It definitely is original impression in the sediment. Oh, I think we're talking about a massive cover-up. Uh, as I said, over the past 150 years, uh, these archaeologists and anthropologists have covered up as much evidence as they've dug up, literally. Basically, what you find is uh, something we call a knowledge filter. This is a fundamental feature of science. It's also a fundamental feature of human nature. People tend to filter out things that don't fit, that don't make sense in terms of their paradigm or their way of thinking. So in science, you find that evidence that doesn't fit the accepted paradigm tends to be eliminated. It's not taught, it's not discussed, and people who are educated in, in scientific teachings generally don't even learn about it. Is carbon dating accurate? Only to a certain extent. In order for carbon dating to be accurate, we must know what the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 was in the environment in which our specimen lived during its lifetime. Unfortunately the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 has yet to reach a state of equilibrium in our atmosphere. There is more carbon-14 in the air today than there was thousands of years ago. Furthermore, the ratio is known to fluctuate significantly over relatively short periods of time. Carbon dating is somewhat accurate because we are able to determine what the ratio was in the unobservable past, to a certain extent. By taking a carboniferous specimen of known age, that is, a specimen which we are able to date with reasonable certainty through some archaeological means, scientists are able to determine what the ratio was during a specimen's lifetime. They are then able to calibrate the carbon dating method to produce fairly accurate results. Carbon dating is thus accurate within the time frame set by other archaeological dating techniques. Unfortunately, we aren't able to reliably date artifacts beyond several thousand years. Scientists have tried to extend confidence in the carbon dating method further back in time, by calibrating the method using tree ring dating. Unfortunately, tree ring dating is itself not entirely reliable, especially the long chronology employed to calibrate the carbon dating method. The result is that carbon dating is accurate for only a few thousand years. Anything beyond that is questionable. This fact is borne out in how carbon dating results are exploited by scientists in the scientific literature. Many scientists will use carbon dating test results to back up their position, if the results agree with their preconceived theories. But if the carbon dating results actually conflict with their ideas, they are too concerned. This demeanor is clearly reflected in a regrettably common practice, when a radiocarbon date agrees with the expectations of the excavator, it appears in the main text of the site report. If it is slightly discrepant, it is relegated to a footnote. If it seriously conflicts it is left out altogether. So, is carbon dating accurate? It is for specimens which only date back a few thousand years. Anything beyond that is problematic and highly doubtful. If you accept the flood theory, then you know that anything before the flood was contaminated and cannot be accurately carbon dated. It's my personal belief that one of the ways life was reduced in years and size was the altering of the atmosphere by the hand of God. There are many details scientists assume were present at any given time. You must remember they are only guessing. Scientists give off an illusion of knowledge as if it were true. If you say something long enough and loud enough, Society will accept it as truth, whether it is or not. Do not accept the solution. Carbon dating has a 10,000 year limit, anything after that can be highly inaccurate. 